And good afternoon. Welcome to Upstate International's Tasting Pura Vida, Costa Rican cooking with local chef David Porras and moderated by Lori Nelson. We are so glad you took, out, took time today to join us for this. Um, Costa Rica is known for a few beautiful things, waterfalls, dramatic forests, fresh living. It seems to be kind of the ultimate place for an adventurer to go. And I believe their food is um, showcasing of that adventurous spirit and kind of the merging of many cultures that came into Costa Rica. Pura Vida, or the good life, is the goal of Costa Rican cooking. Um, Chef David Porras is originally from Costa Rica, and he's going to introduce us to his love for fresh food and farm-to-table culture that he grew up with and now helps to make it come uh, true in the Greenville area at the cafe. He's master chef with Oak Hill Cafe, um, along with his partner, Lori Nelson. I want to let you know that today this program is brought to you by Upstate International. Upstate International is your nonprofit connection to the world. We're dedicated to engaging South Carolina globally and supporting international cultures in our region. So if you enjoy these three programs, we request that you consider supporting us, either through membership or a donation. After all, putting on free programs is not free, and our goal is to bring you the best quality we can. Um, so today, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our chef, David. David ran a Borgine, and I cannot pronounce that correctly, mm -hmm. but it is a farm-to-table restaurant in the mountain area of Costa Rica. He has a diploma in culinary arts from Latina University and was certified in hydrocolids and avant-garde techniques at the French Culinary Institute. He obtained a master's in cuisine techniques and products from the renowned Basque Culinary Center in San Sebastian, Spain. So David's had a little experience all over the world. Our moderator today, Lori Nelson, the co-owner and former laboratory manager in the Earth and Environmental Sciences Department at Furman, has an MPH in Environmental Health Sciences and Toxicology from the University of California at Berkeley. Looks like Lori's a little bit of a traveler too. Um, Lori has a passion for baking and cooking and has blended her laboratory and kitchen skills. She also attended the Seasonal School of Culinary Arts in Asheville, North Carolina. If you haven't been to Oak Hill Cafe in Greenville yet, I invite you all to check it out. They grow their produce. They bring a fresh, um, inviting experience to, in the atmosphere of their cafe. Right now they have outdoor seating as well as I believe indoor, and we'll double check that with Lori. Um, yes, but I do invite you to go and support them as well. So with no further ado, uh, David, are you ready to uh, teach us what you can about Costa Rica? Yes, I'm ready. Um, how are you, everyone? Um, I'm very, very, we're very, very excited to do this today. Um, we chose two different uh, very staple dishes in my country. One is gallo pinto, um, which is kind of like a hop and jones in, in the southern area. Um, so gallo pinto is very, very common to see in the morning. Sometimes people eat it for lunch, sometimes eat it for uh, dinner. Um, so it's like the main breakfast um, that we eat most of the time, and it's a big breakfast. It's mostly for people who work on farms, and it became the biggest thing that we always eat in the house, uh, besides you know bread and um, and um, and scrambled eggs and cheese and uh, fr uh, fried plantains. So we use um, to make the gallo pinto. We have uh, in my house, we have beans already cooked. Um, so if you can see, this is red beans, which is quite normal. In, in my country, you can use both uh, black beans and red beans. Black beans, um, both, they have more antioxidants um, as well, like the red beans. So 
it depends where you are in, in, in different region in Costa Rica, you're going to see a different type of beans, but it's always the same thing. It's, it's, it's the mix between the rice and beans. Um, so we got the rice done and I just have it here in this container, um, which is how I can explain how to cook the rice, which is very simple. Um, if you're in your home and you're trying to cook rice, you can use a rice cooker or you can use, put a boiling water. Um, if you do, you can do one cup of rice by six, six cup of water, start boiling the water, throw the rice when the water, when the water starts boiling, throw the rice, put your timer for eight minutes, um, uh, remove it from the, from the, from the stove and then put it in a strainer and then you can rinse to remove the starches and that's part cooked rice. So, and then when you start making gallo pinto, which is I'm going to start right now, I have set myself here with diced peppers. This is green pepper. You can use red pepper, it doesn't matter. If you use local, we have some growing in our farm and our backyards in my house. Um, often in Costa Rica, the, 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 the sofrito or, or the cooking rice, I mean, to cook the beans, uh, the gallo pinto, you use a mix of onions and peppers. I like to add a little bit more flavor, which is mushrooms. I got diced mushrooms here. Um, and then onions, preferences. I mean, it's up to you. If you don't like onions, I mean, who doesn't like onions? I think everybody loves onions, but um, you can use garlic. You can use some of the things that you are aware in this area of uh, the Southern, um, you know, make it tasty as the, the, the bottom goal. And um, I'm gonna start turning the, I use to make, Cayo uh, Pinto in Costa Rica, we use a pot like this, but bigger. Um, it's often in houses, like my grandma used to have one like this big because she was feeding maybe between 10 to 50, 15 people in the morning because everybody came to the, my grandma's house to have breakfast. So it's quite common. We, I cook with olive oil. Um, you can use any other neutral oil, which is mean canola or your favorite oil, grapeseed oil, um, whatever you want, this should be fine. Um, but in Costa Rica, most of the time we used to cook with lard um, or we call something manteca, which is, is um, the, uh, it's, um, it's vegetable oil. Um, so you start with heating the oil. Um, I'm going to show you this. You see this, the achote, achote paste. Um, this is come from a seed that grows in a tree about 10, I think it's about eight feet long, uh, tall. And it comes in a pot like this. And what we've done here, you can see is bright red. It's a paste that uses fat and they infuse it and then a low heat with fat and then just um, tint the, the fat with the color of red and it will have a very distinct flavor which is being we're going to use it to cook our chicken our shredded chicken which is right here for the chalupas um so when you're thinking about um gallo pinto it's always served with whatever you have left over from the day before you can have beef too you can just heat it up put it on the side we eat it normal we eat it with fried fried plantains uh, uh, fried cheese or, or cheese, sour cream make uh, from a local farm um, in Costa Rica. And then you have your scrambled eggs or fried eggs or whatever, you know, it's a big breakfast. So we eat pretty well in the morning. Uh, that's one of the reasons we have one of the healthiest um, diets, I think. But, you know, yeah. uh, people like to eat really well in the morning. We cook everything at every single house you go, everybody cooks from scratch. Um, so, you know, it just always, uh, it makes it fun because you're cooking with your grandma, you're cooking with your mom and everybody just talking. So right now we have the oil at the temperature that we're looking for. What we're gonna do is just start cooking the onions Daddy, to caramelize. Yes? Can you tell people where to get the achiachi paste uh -huh. locally? Yes, they can get it at the La Unica store by at the Wild Horse Road. Um, and then they can get this. Um, this is our, I'm going to show you this. This is Salsa Lisana. You can find this in every single house in Costa Rica. This is like soy sauce in Costa Rica for us. 
We use it for marinate meats. We use it to eat scramble eggs or eggs. We use it to everything. Not in soups because that imparts a little bit different flavor, but I always relate this to soy sauce. It's our common sauce that you can use for flavoring uh, many different preparation in Costa Rica. And this as well, you can get it at the um, La Unica store. As well, I, my, my favorite powder milk from my country. Um, so, <laughs> so you add the onions, right? And then you cook the onions. Um, I have a high heat. I'm going to lower the heat. Always trying to control the heat is the best way you can cook anything. Because if you walk away for two minutes in a hot heat, you're going to have a disaster. It happens to many people. And then we're going to make chalupas. Chalupas is, it's a, it comes from um, other regions of uh, Central America, mostly from Mexico. But, you know, we culturize things that come from other culture to be part of our culture. So I learned to make this chalupa from my mom. It's a really simple recipe. We're going to use the same beans, turn into refried beans. Um, and um, chicken from a local chicken place here. They have a really good chicken. We start using one, um, which is about a mile away from my restaurant. Right now, Red Gap Farm, and it is incredible. Um, and then you boil the chicken with cold water, and as soon as you start boiling, you remove the, you, you um, what is it, skim the, the, the broth, and then you add your flavoring, which is um, onions, carrots, and celery. And I like to put with mine oregano, thyme, garlic, black pepper. So, because that broth is going to be used to cook the chicken, because we're going to like it kind of simmer the chicken in the same broth with tomatoes and onions and peppers as well. And we're going to uh, cook it with a little bit of achote um, and then soy sauce. And then the final touch for this is ketchup. A little surprising. So I'm now I'm adding the peppers. So we're going to cook, I'm going to cook the peppers about two minutes. Um, and then the mushrooms. Um, as I said, a very simple recipe is nothing, you know, it's nothing super fancy. Our, our cooking um, come from uh, the French training. Um, Costa Rica was conquered by Spaniards, so the broad rice, we used to grow, um, the indigenous used to grow the, their beans, and that's the way we got, you know, the influence from the African American cultures. They were cooking rice and beans in many different ways. Um, so. I got the three different flavor components here. Um, I like to cook the beans first. And when I cook in the beans uh, first, I like to use one of my favorite ingredients in our kitchen is cumin. <laughs> and Lori know this because we use cumin, <laughs> not in everything, but we use it in most of the things. I think in part of the good flavors. We use a lot of spices in, in our in our in Oak Hill Cafe. We have about maybe uh, I think we have about 50 different spices in our in our kitchen, and we want to spend to have at least 200. Um, I think it's better. So when you're cooking this, it's about five minutes. Um, so I'm gonna uh, flavor this. So this is the sofrito, which is quite common in um, in Spain too. They make a base. Sometimes you can add tomatoes to this. This is paprika. It came from uh, Spain brought from my brother-in-law from Madrid as uh, one of the most common and famous uh, paprika yeah, in, in area Spain. And I had chili powder, so it's up to you. You can use just onions, <clears throat> peppers, and mushrooms. And I have a little bit of diced mush, uh, peppers, uh, sorry, tomatoes. And I'm going to add a tea, a, a two tablespoons for this because tomatoes have a lot of flavor and I have a lot of mommy. So I want my gallo pinto to be the best gallo pinto you can eat ever. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's, that's it. So we cook this, we stir this, wait until the, um, to the tomatoes is cooked and get a little mushy. When they get like this, about two minutes and a half, you're gonna add your um, beans. 
So proportions, very, very important to, to know the proportion from beans and rice. Um, we said for one cup of rice, cooked cup of rice, we do half a cup of beans. Uh, and then when you talk to nutritionists, they said that two, um, um, the rice and the beans uh, portions, it becomes a whole protein. So that's the way we do it. And then sometimes in my house, we eyeball it. So we don't, we don't use cups. Right now I'm gonna do it with this big spoon. David, in the, wanna... in the recipe you were sending out to them, it also says we can use um, uh, garlic and cilantro. Yes, you... that's garlic. You wanna do it right at the end because it cooks really fast. So you don't want to burn the rice because it gives you a bitterness and you just want to cook it, you know, like about a minute, add the beans. Um, and cilantro, we add it always, always at the end, more like a garnish, not for cooking. Um, because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have a brown cilantro. You want to have a nice green flavor of cilantro. So I have my, my beans uh, with the sofrito ready. See if I can. Uh, it's hot, so. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna cook this down a little bit, right? Sometimes if I get really inspired, what I like to do is just add a uh, about half a tablespoon of butter. Who doesn't like butter? I mean, everybody loves butter. So what I do is I take by now. I said a tablespoon of uh, teaspoon of butter. And then we mix everything again. And then now we have a beautiful, I can say this is supposed to be a refried beans. And this is the way you can do your refried beans is cooking onions and peppers and jalapeno pepper, whatever you want. And then instead of just blending it, which is more common in, the, in uh, Mexican cuisine, you can smash the beans with that and eat it with tortilla chips and sour cream, or, you know, you can make your own uh, queso deep. Um, so this is ready. It's thick, it's beautiful. I'm going to add the rice. So I add about two, two big spoon of rice. And I'm adding about the same amount, not the same, sorry, about four spoons, which is, I'm gonna eyeball this. Yeah. And if you think it's a lot, you know, if the gallupinta looks is getting thick, you can use the same cooking liquid from the beans and then pour that over, whisk. I find out when, the, when, the, when you cook the rice, we always use some, something that you need to know in Costa Rica, you use rice from the day before. The reason why is because it's, it's set. So it's not like super clump, you know, like, uh, like, like this is big pieces. But when you cook, when you cook and you learn, you can use the potato smasher and then just do this. <laughs> it helps to get the rice less um, in a big clumps. And then that's it. So right now what we're trying to do is lower the heat. Uh, my grandma used to make this uh, when she cooks this, she used to make it about an hour and a half. So she, she leave it on the side. Of the, um, she used to cook with uh, a nice wooden um, stove instead of just like gas or anything like that. So the flavor was way different. So the, the cayo pinto looks super nice. Um, so right now, this, the ratio that I put in like two spoons by about four or five spoons of rice, big spoons. This is gonna be enough for four people. Four, I would say five, it depends how much you eat, right? So on the side, I'm gonna start, we're gonna leave the, the rice here, uh, the gallo pinto, just slowly cooking. Sometimes you're gonna come in, but we wanna kind of make the bottom a little bit crispy, which is, that's, that's that was one of the biggest fight in my grandma's house because that was it's a, it was the crunchy, beautiful flavors that you were just we, we all fighting for that. So low heat, 
don't forget that you're gonna you need to come back and stir this a little bit and then i'm gonna start with the chalupas because this thing is working there you go so achote la única or any any mexican store uh you can buy this right so you're gonna take about a set of tablespoons to do this if you don't like to use use this this is this is going to give you a nutty flavor to the base so it's very common in my country to use it with pork when we make our pork sausage this is one of the biggest components and we use paprika mostly because it just make the sausage sausage looks more red uh pork and then we use this so we're going to do it just add that olive oil preferences as i said you can use a set of olive oil butter and we're gonna cook tomatoes we're gonna add the onions again now let this um get the achote get more dissolved here we're gonna add the onions now beautiful onions um, so this is the way it looks. I wish you can you can smell this. It is, in, I mean, the smell from the chote is really, really, really insane. So we're gonna cook the same thing. I like to cook my onions at a high heat for at least two minutes and then lower the heat after two minutes to medium and then cook it for about five minutes until they are uh, crystallized. So now coming back to the gallo pinto. Any questions? So it's looking really, really tasty. It's looking really like exciting. Um, someone wants to know if your paprika is uh, the hot kind or the sweet kind, David. It's, this one is um, sweet kind, and I got the two different kinds. I got the smoked paprika, Pimentón de la Vera. You can buy this on Amazon if you want to have this. I mean, this is my, this is one of the most incredible paprikas, and is um, it have uh, um, it grows in one specific area on, in Spain, and I think it's. Let me read this here. Um, Caceres is, is yeah, I think is where they do this. So you can use, if you use the spicy, uh, the spicy kind, you don't, you, you want to be careful because at the end of the day, you're going to have very spicy um, gallo pinto and, and gallo pinto soft can be like savory, sweet, a little bit of sourness uh, because of this salsa lisano. And then I'm gonna give you my my secret. This is my other secret weapon <laughs> for gallo pinto. It's a little bit like two drops of soy sauce and most of the meals that we cook sometimes, it brings the flavor to another level. It, it bounds, it's kind of like a, um, connects everything, right? Like the same way we use salt. I haven't put any salt in um, into this, but the reason why because I need to try this before I I, I add any other seasoning. David, can you say the name of the paprika you buy again, please? Vera. Mm -hmm. mm. That is awesome. I wish you can try this. Uh, Pimentón de la Vera. Great. Can you guys read it? Pimentón oh yeah, you can see it. Vera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of the best paprika ever. Um, this, the gallo pinto need a little salt. We're gonna just, just do this. It is sweet because the tomatoes and the peppers. So I'm not, sometimes I add a, a pinch, like a tiny little pinch of sugar. Um, I believe that when we cook, we gotta cook with all the taste in our, in our tongue. Uh, sweet, sour, you know, um, salty and everything else. So this is 
onions are looking great. I'm gonna add the tomatoes and let this cook for another five minutes. So by the amount I made for Gallo Pinto, I, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of, um, I think that was, yeah, that was fine. Um, of uh, salsa lisano, as I said, a couple drops of this uh, soy sauce. Um, probably me add a little bit of miso, but you know, that's, that's more Asian cooking than <laughs> Costa Rican cooking. <laughs> and then you, you mix this and again, you know, you let this just get the flavors bind together. If you leave it at low heat in your stove, um, every five minutes, if you want to leave it until it becomes crunchy, it's going to take about half an hour, 45 minutes, because the oil is going to get on the bottom and it's get, get this super crunchy. So I got my other mix going. This is the onions and, cut and um, tomatoes. I'm going to wait about five, six minutes. Um, as I said, I have peppers here, so I don't want to waste anything. So the peppers going with the with the with the, um, um, chalupas mix, which is peppers. I mean, ch sorry, um, chicken. So we're gonna cook this about six, seven minutes. Let's let's get this a little bit nice and tender. The veggies for the chalupas for the chicken. This is kind of like chicken stew um, or braised chicken. I wouldn't say braised because we're not braising in the oven. So this is more like a stew. So I got my shredded chicken. This is about um, a pound, I think about two pounds because this is gonna be our dinner tonight. <laughs> so I told my wife, I'm gonna make a lot so they can use it for dinner for everybody in the house. Um, now we have a four. question about the soy sauce. What kind of, what mm -hmm. do you recommend? Um, there's, right now which is very interesting question we have about we used to only have one choice uh kikomono i think is one of the one and now soy sauce is becoming one of the most used um flavoring um liquids in the kitchen so you can buy this is tamari which is, i think is made with rice um if i not you know 100 percent sure but it makes with that but you can use any soy sauce that is being made with koji, which is a malt that grows into um, beans and then they use it now rice to infuse that. So it has very fruity flavors, very rich in umami. So whatever you guys want to do, um, it would be, you know, I think it would be fantastic. Um, so this is getting ready for the chicken. And one thing I do with the chicken, um is i add the chicken like right now we're gonna add the chicken it's gonna be a little bit too much but you know it's for the big for the whole family so it should be fine i'm cooking like a, i'm cooking for my house is there a kind and, of pan that you prefer of, to make either of these recipes well for gallo pinto like this for the chicken i can use a big one which is uh for this amount of for the size of this pan, I would make at least for four. So I would use half the same chicken. But mm -hmm. since I'm cooking for my family, you know, I cook the same way. But the, the bigger, the more chicken you have, the better. Use a bigger pan, like maybe like the same, the same one used for the gallo pinto would be great um, to use the same size. I was just like, you know, we're trying to be mini, minimalist in our house. So we don't want to have like 20,000 pots. We just use the most common ones. Um, but the most for, this type of preparation for the chicken and the rice, the gallo pinto, this pot, it would be better. It's more like- You like um, cast iron? Yes, yeah. Okay. So right now, I got my chicken with, um, I'm stirring the chicken with the base on the bottom so it looks dry. What I'm going to do is lower the heat because the chicken's already boiled and shredded. So you buy your raw chicken, you may, you know your own stock and then you uh you save the stock and then you're going to use it 
before cooking later, which is I did this, and you can drink it as a bump broth for joint pains or um, if you're doing a, a diet, this is a great way to eat without eating, Tr you know, tricking your uh, belly that you're eating. Um, so this is, so we're gonna cook this about 10 minutes, just simmering. Um, when this is ready, it's gonna look like a super um, tender chicken. I lo I'm lowering the heat right now by half. So I'm a medium cooking. Got your pinto look and smell. So, got your pinto, I mean, chalupas. This, tortillas, right? Where you can get tortillas? You can get it in anywhere right now. You can go to Publix, you can go to uh, Inkles, you can go to Whole Foods, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Our favorite place when we use tortillas in our restaurant is a torti tortilleria over in Whitehorse Road called Tortilleria, uh, Tortilleria, I think, right, Lori? Uh, yes, it's, uh, there's more to that, but. <laughs> Tortilleria and más, something like that, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so. Taca, yeah. This, this Taca, is, yeah. this, can you see? That's the way mm -hmm. the chicken looks. So it's, it's like half, like one fourth of the chicken is on top with no liquid. The other three fourths is liquid. So that's going to cook down by half and we're gonna season this with a little bit of ketchup and, and lisana. It's very important to do that. And then, um, let me find the towel. So tortillas, you, that, that's the way you get tortillas. Um, chalupa is meant to be um, eat with crunchy tortillas, so what you do, you can either buy the one at the store. I think you can buy the one already uh, fried at the store. Make this over here. And what we're gonna do in my house, we do this. So it's a little bit of labor, but uh, the reward is it's amazing because you can make yourself everything. So we're gonna get the oil to a temp where we can fry these tortillas. And I made this today in the morning. Um, you got the recipe in the book on, on uh, chalupas. You got the recipe how to make this, or you can just buy this at the store. So it's up to you. I was like, I forgot to buy some yesterday. It was in my list to do. And I was like, oh man, you know what? We have corn tortilla flour, which I'm going to show you what you can get. This is what we always have in the house, as well as like flour. Um, and then to make tortillas, we're gonna do the next cooking class. Maybe we can do another one just to use tortillas as we make like gallos. In Costa Rica, we, we call tacos here for us as gallos in Costa Rica. So we can do a cooking class and, and how to make your own gallos. Um, so there is no salt in this base. So, but it is looking. Very good chicken. Ready? We, after that, we're gonna fry some plantains. <laughs> yeah, we have plantains. So the way you cook or uh, cook your plantains is always in my country is pin, pin fry. Um, you can either slice the plantain like this, or you can do coins. Most, more likely in my country is gonna be, they take a whole plantain and they bake, make like big slices. For this purpose, I'm gonna slice it this way. See that? Yes. Okay, so you take your plantain, either you can cut up a, a piece, so which is easier when it's a round shape in the kitchen. We often make a slat like that, and you turn it down so it doesn't move around, and then you can go and cook your plantain, cook, cut the plantain without any danger of cutting yourself. And I'm gonna use the same oil that I'm going to fry the um, tortillas. So you can use either flour or corn, but we prefer corn um, tortillas. Yes, 
For the chalupas, it's always eaten with corn tortillas, but it's preferences. It's up to anyone to use anything. To be honest, I mean, it's what people want the most. You know, um, if you ask me, I'd rather eat tortillas, uh, corn tortillas, in my opinion, which is, that's what I did this morning. I made myself a scramble egg with fried, fried plantain, two tortillas and queso fresco. That was my breakfast in the morning. And it is, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was, well, I felt like in heaven, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I eat too much bread and I don't try to do that. <laughs> trying to at least eat less uh, bread. Not that I don't like it. I love bread. It just continues. So the pinto, I think we have this season pretty well. Mm. Nice. It's getting nice and, uh, you know, less um, uh, humid. So it's more dry, which is the best gallo pinto you can have. As I said, half an hour in the stove. Stir it every 10, five minutes, um, and you should have a, a nice veggie pinto. We're going to eat it with homemade sour cream that we make in our house. Um, the way we make sour cream, I, um, it's super easy. You take buttermilk, or um, I, I start buying sour cream starter, um, which is sour cream with cultures. And you use about a quart of um, heavy cream and then about three one one third of a cup of culture sour cream and then that's it and then you leave it i'm leaving it up to the up here in the stove with a coffee filter and then about 24 36 hours you take it, salt, whisk it, and the flavor is, I mean, it's, amazing. it's just incredible. It's better than uh, anything else I think on the store. Tell them why you use a coffee filter on top with a rubber band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I use this rubber band. Coffee filter. Mm -hmm. If I can find the coffee filter. <laughs> we used to have a lot of coffee filters in this house. Well, so you're not going to leave it without the top, right? You're going to leave it like this because it doesn't need to breathe out. That's one of the reasons. It has to be in a temperature around, um, around, um, uh, 85 to 90 degrees. So the best warm space in your, in your kitchen is either the upper shelves or you can leave it in your pantry. It's going to take a little longer, but I do, I put the coffee filter here and I take the rubber band and I just do that. Secure this because you don't want to have, you don't want to have any flies or anything like that because that's just a waste. Um, so the tortilla is frying right now and then i'm gonna make scramble eggs <laughs> to, to complete that i mean i gotta make it the same way we eat it you know what i mean costa rica um so for scramble eggs we like to make uh, for us we do two eggs per person um normal scramble i got my other fry pan here um about medium heat, salt. Either way, I mean, I say scramble, but you can have, you can make this um, black pepper, fresh. Oh, let me see this. I can eat it again. And then for the tortillas, for the fried tortilla, they need to be crispy. This is better than buying in the store, to be honest. You don't have to go to the store and buy like those packaged crispy, crispy tortillas because they don't taste the same. Um, and this is me just trying to be honest with you guys because the more you can do in your house, the better. I think you can control a lot of the, 
Lakers. I'm looking for one. Behind you. There you go. Yeah. Just trying to get. So, you see this? It's crispy. Okay. And then we put this in, in, in paper to absorb the oil. And I'm going to fry mostly in my country. You're going to have a gigantic chalupa. They made like big one. So chicken is ready. I'm going to flavor my chicken with soy sauce, um, ketchup about a tablespoon. Soy uh, lisano back again, about the same amount. And this you can either add for the chicken, you can add um, cilantro if you prefer. Um, dry, like you can do um, chipotle, dry chipotle pepper. Um, you can do anything. I mean, it's as I said, it depends how you like it. If you want to have spicy chalupa, instead of sweet pepper or bell pepper, you use um, um, you use jalapeno or poblano, which is less spicy than the other one. I'd rather use poblano. It's spicy, but not super spicy. So this is ready. Lower the heat to that. I like to break the yolks because it make it easier for you know whisking the egg. This this tortilla is ready. And remember, for for me, it's a lot easier to multitask. So I have you know four three things going once. For you, you can just do the gallo pinto, and then eat the gallo pinto, and then you do your chalupas if you have, happen to have chalupas for later, as I'm doing right now. You don't have to fry the plantains like this in that amount of oil. I just used it because it's already hot, so I don't need to move the oil and then put another pan. I mean, it's... Being flexible in the kitchen is one of the biggest things we need to learn sometimes. Um, and that way it makes it easy. I'll wait my egg until I don't see any egg yolks or whites. They're not combined. And I don't know how you guys like your eggs, but I like mine creamy. So. <laughs> I do this kind of movement when I cook my eggs, so it means that I'm making sure all the heat is around the eggs, so you see in its setting. So you, when you make eggs, you take your eggs and then slightly take the pan to close to smoking. Um, if you use butter, it would be, at this point, we can add the butter and make, the but and make these eggs more creamy. So for me, this is the type of eggs I like to eat. That cream. So we got you eggs. Your pan before you broke the eggs? Yeah, I did. I took my pan and then high heat for at least uh, about two minutes. And mm. this is ready. And once it got hot, I just turned, the pan, turned, turned off the heat and I incorporated my eggs. So I'm gonna start almost kind of plating what we're gonna have for lunch or breakfast. You can, I remember, gallo pinto, you don't have a timeline. You can eat it, you can eat it for lunch, dinner, you know. My, some of my brothers sometimes ask my mom, can, I, can you make gallo pinto tonight? And you know, I'm like, what, gallo pinto, come on. We can make something, something else. So I got my creamy eggs on the side here. If you wanna make the creamy, creamy eggs, you can add a little bit of cream and butter at the end. And then you stir that, and then you're gonna have the most creamy eggs in your life. The other way you can do is by um, double boiling the eggs. So you have water in, in one pot, and you have a a bowl like this, a big bowl. Put it on top, and you're slowly whisking the the eggs. Make sure to bring oh, the temperature wow. all the way around. So, and then you make it takes a lot longer I mean, though. <laughs> uh, it, it's gonna take like 15 minutes to do that. Like I'm making a whole on days, but not like that. So I got my eggs. Um, you said about cilantro. 
So this is where we bring cilantro onto a plate. We got this cilantro, beautiful cilantro today. And I'm gonna serve my gallo pinto. And remember, this is a big, big meal. So I'm gonna serve myself very, not a big, and you can see a slight of the crunchiness on here. Very, so if you leave it longer, it's, um, I mean, I hope you can see it. It's gonna be very, very crunchy, like really crunchy. So you got this. Uh, you, I ha I brought some, I bought some sausages yesterday, so I don't wanna cook it uh, because it's gonna be way too much for me. I don't eat that much. But in my house, that's gonna be in, in Costa Rica, it's gonna be normal. So we got this. Um, I'm gonna put some queso fresco. <laughs> so you got queso fresco, gallo pinto. Uh, and here in, in my own house, we have queso fresco, fried plantain, sour cream, scramble eggs, um, the whole nine yard. It is, as I said, it's a big breakfast, so we often eat uh, in the morning, and then you'll be eating close to one piece is fine. Close to three or four, so it's a nice, big, nice meal for that. So, What's your favorite kind of queso fresco? Um, I don't have it in my house, but if you go to Casco or you go to La Unica, on the package it's gonna say queso, queso, fried cheese, which is um, you can pan fry the cheese in the in, in the U.S. or some places here they call it. The squishy cheese. It makes it sound like when you buy, it make a really nice sound, like squeezing. So a little salt here. Black pepper. This is up to you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm adding black pepper just because I like the flavor. We're done with black pepper. And then we're almost ready with this. We're gonna add the gallo pinta, the plantain, which is they're done. I like my plantains, and Lori know this, I like my plantains cook like black. This one I just be more normal. <laughs> this is the way this is the way my mom cooks plantains. He also and loves the like, plantains themselves get black. Yes. Or he cooks them. We got five plantains, we got our scramble eggs, we got this. I have avocado. And I'm using the protein, but we had so, so too many protein right now. Cilantro, back again. Garnish this, just like this. You can Yum. chop it, you can <laughs> chop it and, and mix it with that, but you know, you're cooking the cilantro. The idea is to have that fresh bite of cilantro when you have guacamole or anything like salsa or anything like that, you don't want to ruin that flavor of the cilantro. You want to have it the more intense is better. So I'm just moving this out. So the chicken is ready. So, and then I can use this same chicken for this meal. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you have leftover, um, you can use it for the next day or either for the next meal. Um, we got, you know, most of the houses in my country, they don't have that much money, so they use everything in many, many ways. Um, and that becomes zero waste because we didn't throw anything away. Um, so this is done. This is done. I got my this. And now I'm going to show you guys how to make a really easy refried bean. This. To make my refried beans in my house, and I think is back to the same thing, flavor, I start with butter. So a butter and a little bit of um, olive oil. And butter is gonna be the one of the flavor components into this. And olive oil, same amount of olive oil, same amount of butter. So it's not, you know, you're not using too much, but you're using a lot. Um, and I'm making, you know, I'm making quite a bit for my family. So for tonight, and then you put the beans. 
I didn't even left the butter to melt because at the end we're gonna smash this. So it doesn't matter. Oops, I spilled. Right, a little bit of liquid. All right, we're gonna let that kind of simmer for a little bit for about five minutes. We're gonna use soy sauce, I mean soy sauce, <laughs> Lizano. About half a teaspoon and let me think, a little bit of ketchup, yes. About half a teaspoon. Ready? Little bit of uh, back again, dark chili powder, just a little bit. A little bit of cumin. Again, remember, um, some of the flavors that we are using, they're all in the same preparation. The reason why is if I add cumin here and I don't add it here, there's gonna be a different sense of flavors. So what we're trying to do is trying to link everything by one component. It could be black pepper here, black pepper here. So when you have a bite, you always have the same flavors again, instead of just pulling away from something else. Sometimes you do that, sometimes you don't do that. I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin to this. David, if people don't have sauce uh, Lisano in their house, what can they use instead? They can use uh, Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Worcestershire sauce. Um, this is this. Uh, I wouldn't say any, anything else. Worcestershire sauce is the closest thing we can use as, the, as a replacement for making this the the gallo pinto it's not going to have the same flavor but it doesn't matter if you have if you don't have um lisano <clears throat> we done it without lisano so it's not like you have to have it it's just what you can use always if i always say before you go to the store look at your pantry and think about if this tastes the same a little bit of sour cream with the plantains you know Mm. Beautiful sour cream. <laughs> this sour cream is amazing. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna <clears throat> we put our our um, we keep our avocados in the fridge just to keep them um, not ripening really quick. And then a little bit of avocado. In Costa Rica. If you have fresh tortilla like this one, your gajo pinto is gonna have two tortillas, your chicken, your plantains, your eggs, your cheese. If you want a whole nine yard, some restaurant they don't they only sell you the gajo pinto eggs, and then you add the, you do adding. So you start adding um, the you know the meat, or you add in the avocado. This is a happy bowl. <laughs> and so this is a breakfast for champions. <laughs> 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 um, that's the best breakfast you can have in the morning, at least two or three times a week. Um, we do Everyone's it. hungry no matter if they ate or not today. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you put together the chalupas? Um, okay, so the 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 beans are ready. Uh, uh, I'm gonna someone smash. Would like, someone would like to see that finished bowl one more time. If you can hold it up to sure. the camera. So you got your eggs. They're set more because you, you know I cook it before I, I plate everything. So if you're plating everything, wait for the eggs to be done at the last minute. You got your avocados, eggs, cheese. This is the cilantro, uh, you know, you can just garnish your plate like this. You have your fry um, uh, plantain, okay. which is beautiful, sweet. A little bit of sour cream, up to you. You already have your cheese, so you don't have to do that. But, you know, in Costa Rica, it doesn't matter, you uh, whatever. And then uh, avocado, if you have it. In Costa Rica, we grow avocados everywhere. We have about, I think, about eight to ten different kinds of uh, avocados and they grow in many places. So we, we're very spoiled with that. And then I'm, I'm smashing the beans. As you see, I'm using this spoon 
because it's, it's a small pot. But if I have a bigger one, I can use a fork, which is, is better for this. But this is gonna work. I don't want the beans to be like blended. I like the texture of the beans in this preparation. In one second, we're gonna taste the chicken for the chalupa. And we're gonna see what, what else do we need. Um, I forgot to save some tomatoes to make a salsa. <laughs> I'm gonna mm -hmm. make a quick salsa with pep, uh, with cucumbers, you know? So that's, that's the thing. How do you do that? It just, you can shred it some carrots and cucumbers if you don't have tomatoes. Oh, I, it happens to me that I over, I use the tomatoes instead of saving a little bit, um, but you can use something else. So you this is, you see. Earlier um, in the program that you can use black beans or red beans. Um, yes. They're kind of beans. They're small red beans. They're not kidney beans. Um, yeah, this is just normal red beans. Kidney mm -hmm. beans are going to give you a bigger bean when it cooks. So you can just find red beans, normal black beans, normal. Um, I wouldn't say use anything else besides those things. But, if, you know, as I said, if you have black eyed peas and you want to make a pinto and you don't want to go to the store. I mean, use black eyed peas. They're, they're delicious. So all I'm saying is. Uh, we like to have a recipe, but we're, we're not always in case on the recipe. We're always looking a different way. How can we, you know, make it even better or use something else that I don't have in my house because I don't want to go to the store. I always got up in the morning like, ah, oh, why, why do I need to go to the store and buy um, tortillas? I can make tortillas. So the chicken is, you can see the chicken. It's, it's like a, a pulled a pull chicken for barbecue. That's, that's the texture. There's a little bit of water uh, or broth um, that I use. Right now I'm gonna try the chicken. Um, mm. A little bit more salt, more pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika, then more lisano. My refried beans are looking. Very good. So why do I want to add paprika? Paprika add a little bit of smokiness and sweetness. And you're gonna make this have a, a different color. Um, so you mix this. And you're gonna try this again. Different spoon, not double dipping. <laughs> None of that going on. Mm -mm. Not in COVID. Mm -mm. Mm. Secret. A little bit more ketchup. You try it, you know, when you feel ready, go back to your what you're making, try it once and think about, oh, do I need more pepper? Do I need more cumin? Or do I need more thyme or oregano? And then start playing around with the flavors until like, this is it, this is it. This is the most incredible um, chicken or, or meat or whatever. Refried beans are ready. So our chalupas, I would say 75% done. I left, the last thing I want to do is show you guys that the other component is this. You know what it is? It's a soccer ball. No, it's, it's cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you kick no. that across the kitchen, Davi. I don't think I can. <laughs> so to cut, to do the cabbage, you can do it. Um, by hand, the way I'm going to do it right now is the way my mom used to do it. So you move the out, outer layers so they're a little bit brown, so you don't want that in your um, plate. Remember, it's about presentation at the end and quality. So we move that. This could be fed into the chickens. It could be fed into the pork if you have pork, or if you fed into the wildlife that it goes to your house in the backyard. We turned it into compost in our restaurant. This is we use it for another preparation. So compost. So I got chicken, I mean, I got the pork 
uh, the cabbage cut in the half. And now I'm gonna cut another from the other half, one more half. So I got two wedges, right? Two pieces. This other one, I'm gonna save it for later because I know we're gonna eat all these cabbage today. I know my family. And I'm gonna um, chop this cabbage. So I hope you can see it. I have it face down flat and I'm gonna do this. David, you've just used chicken breast today, but you could use thighs as well, right? Yeah, you can use thighs, you can use chicken breast, you can use um, the whole chicken and shred the whole chicken. The better, if you use the whole chicken, the better because you're gonna have bones into the broth. And as I said, broth right now is one of the biggest things people are drinking for joint pains and stuff like that. So, I got chicken, I got my chicken, I got cabbage that I, Pot like this. If you have a mandoline in your house, use it. If you don't, you don't have to do finer. My mom is make the even this is finer. I don't. I mean, I tried to always learn from my mom from the little kid, and I was like, how do you do that? I mean, it's just a knife move. But it doesn't matter. It could be chunky. Okay. So this, put it in a supper bowl, and I like to dress mine with um, lemon juice. Lemon juice is kind of Pot the a little of the flavor of the cabbage, so and it's gonna remove that. Sometimes that smell is a bit funky from the cabbage, and it's going to be fresh. So I got lemon juice. I'm gonna do half. No salt here, just lemon juice. You outside to start. You're gonna make your sauerkraut. You don't want to make sauerkraut. Later, <laughs> you can do that with the leftovers. <laughs> um, cilantro. So we learn, um, we always thought by people that the only eatable piece from cilantro is this, right? The leaf. I'll tell you now that this is the most flavor, flavor, flavorful part, which is the stems. And the stems, you can add it to the chicken because it's just the stem. Sorry, I'm eating the leaf. Um, and then, you know, that's what we're going to do with this cabbage. We're going to add a little bit of cilantro. Flour. You can eat the flowers, you can eat everything. So we're gonna add cilantro here. Um, I'm gonna leave some of it for this quick cucumber salsa that we got from my neighbor. We have a whole garden in our neighbor, so some people are growing cilantro, some other people are growing yeah, cilantro cucumbers, and some other people are growing a bunch of different things. Alrighty. Very, very close to be done. What's so, your favorite drink with breakfast, Davi? Um, agua dulce. Um, agua dulce is what they call in Mexico and other countries, panela, which is raw sugar. Let me show you what that means. When you take sugar cane juice, um and boil it to the point it become a syrup they this that syrup will get put over into a mold like this and it's set into this hard sugar this is super hard i can shred it or i can grate it with a microplane or my cheese grater um and then you can take it and, and mix it with water and make a like a like a hot tea or i wouldn't call it hot tea like a like a hot drink and and then you add a little bit of milk and we call that agua dulce that's something that we drink in the morning most of the people in my country drink coffee like crazy so we're not you know you can drink horchata or lemonade it's it's you're not i mean you're gonna see people in costa rica just drinking uh straight um coffee and to be honest we have a good coffee but in houses people drink just a not a good coffee. 
So I'm making a cucumber salsa for this. I'm being very honest. I'm not talking about it in my country. I just love my country very much. I just feel like, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> we just go to the store and buy coffee. And, but it's coffee, coffee for the morning. It's not coffee for sitting and sipping by bourbon. <laughs> um, so I'm making my quick uh, uh, cucumber salsa. Uh, this is going to have just cucumbers, maybe a little bit of um, um, carrots. But I'm done with, you know, got your pinto set on the side. So we're done. We're eating. I'm eating now. You know, it's up to you guys. If you want to move, remove the seeds from there, this, this is to me is fiber. So you can remove the seeds from the cucumbers, but you don't have to. Don't think about that. You know, it's some of the flavor from the cucumbers gets inside these beautiful uh, seeds. They're not going to grow in your belly. Like, you know, we just said that our case when they, they said seeds. Um, so I'm taking cucumbers. Like, as I said, Costa Rica, uh, the chalupa is eating with um, tomato salsa. I made a big mistake using the tomato for the chicken, which is fine. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm thinking, I was thinking quick, what can I do? What can I do? And I remember we have a, a lot of cucumbers. So I was like, oh, easy. You eat them, uh, cucumbers. And they just dice, like small dice, nothing fancy. And we're going to marinate this with lemon juice, salt, and cilantro, back again. Right? So that's done. I'm using another bowl. Sorry, I'm, I'm facing my sink right now. The other half of uh, lemon juice, we're gonna use it for this. Okay. Sorry, moving mm -hmm. all the mess to the other side. Make the kitchen more clean. We got the shredded chicken. I mean, sorry, that's the um, cabbage. Yeah, thank you. It's cucumbers and lemon juice, that's it. Yeah, and then you do a um, little bit of cilantro. Again, I'm using the stems. Okay. Done. You can add a little bit of peppers here. I'm going to shred a little bit of our carrots that grows in Oak Hill Cafe. And we all set. <laughs> the beautiful carrots from Oak Hill Cafe. And then I'm using my microplane, which is going to make it, if I can find it make it easier. You can buy our carrots and other produce at our little farmer's market on Thursdays at Oak Hill, or, or we also are part of the Traveler's Rest Farmer's Market. We sell our produce there. This is going to be a finer, um, I'm using this, you can buy it in Polix, microplane. This is for sh shredded cheese, but you know, you can use it for veggies. And it's going to be a super fine shredded carrot that is going to have a lot of flavor for this. So Bobby, when we make this, uh huh. Uh, someone wants to know if you shop at local markets in Costa Rica or grow most of your own food. Um, when we used to have. When, when we had the restaurant in Costa Rica, like growing up, my grandma used to grow, we used to grow rice, beans, um, um, watermelon, um, uh, cantaloupe, uh, tomatoes, all of these things. But we, as a growing up and get, you know, as an adult, 
uh, <clears throat> we used to go to the organic store. <clears throat> Excuse me. And those people work with local farmers. Everything grow in a small quantities. Um, and then you go to the farmer's market every, I think it's every Wednesday afternoon. They come to the town, people from all over different towns, they come with a whole bunch of different veggies <clears throat> in Costa Rica and many other towns. And they grow that and they bring it to sell to our community and they go to another town and they go to another town. That's what they do. They hop around in different places. So my mom used to go to those places and do that. So I forgot for the salsa, you're gonna see in your recipe you have with tomatoes, we do a little bit of lisano, just a little bit, and ketchup. That's the two components for the sauce. Uh, you're not gonna see salsa made this way. This is more my mom's recipe. And as I said, I would love because it's sweet. I have a different la layers of flavors that you're going to be quite surprised when you make this at home. That is fantastic. Don't do what I did, you know, don't, don't, don't throw, the, don't throw the tomatoes in the chicken. Just say something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making this. I don't know if I had any, any um, salt to this. This is I'm going to try this. So I'm, I'm just mixing in this. I'll try it. Mm, very good. Even better. Nice and lemony. So in Costa Rica, when whenever you have a chance to go after this thing happens goes away, um, you can see cucumbers or fresh green mangoes sliced with lemon juice and salt, salt and on the like street food, and you can buy that. And that that's our one of the snacks for us: eating mango from the street and then you dip it into this or you throw the lemon juice inside and you shake the bag and then you eat it. That's one of the treats that we have. So to put together this, <clears throat> I'm going to do the plating. Moving the gallopin to this way. We're in the kitchen. And do you guys see the plate here? Yes. All right. Oh, kind of. Pull it back just a little bit. It. I'm gonna do it on the stove. Okay. So I got my plate, two tortillas, right? And what I'm going to do is take the rib fried beans, nice and thick. You know what? I haven't tasted this. <laughs> I'm thinking it's gotta be okay. <laughs> yeah, this and salt. But they're delicious. This was with um you make creamy scrambled eggs and just refried beans. Oh my god. And then you do this much of refried beans, right? That's one, do the other one, same portion, like that, put this here. I'm gonna do the chicken, and you take the chicken, and I layer the chicken here. And this is messy. This is super messy. When you eat it, you're gonna have things all over the place because you're gonna pick it up. You're not gonna use fork because that's not the way we eat it. When we're done with this, Maybe you we'll use your hands. <laughs> exactly. You gotta see my daughter's face. Her face is like, it's, it makes you feel happy when you see someone eating that way. It's like all over the, the, her face and it's just like, oh, that's the way you, know, you enjoy the meal. But if you want to use fork and knife, I mean, nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say it to do anything. I mean, you can eat it the way you want to eat it. We are mixing the 
um, the uh, cabbage a little bit. And we're gonna take this much. Sometimes people put more uh, cabbage, as I said, as a preference, in my opinion. It's about having the same amount of everything. So when you have a bite, it's the same amount of bite in every single layer. And then we're gonna top it off with this cucumber salsa and carrots from Old Hill Cafe. <laughs> Do this. Mmm, yum. You do that. And the last thing is you got to wipe your plate. <laughs> um, and then if you can do, you can, if you want to do it, you can do extra cilantro in here. But the way you eat it is pick this, pick it up, and have a big, nice bite. And then you're going to have everything fall into the plate and that's when you use your fork because it's hard to pick it up by pieces right but this is chalupas from costa rica and this is gallo pinto <laughs> um and this is typically typically i mean chalupas afternoon like dinner night people always want to eat this it's super light it's not heavy it's comfort food um this came from you know influence from mexico travel all over other countries and got to Costa Rica and then people learned how to take it and become became their own thing as well the gallo pinto it was <clears throat> rice was brought, brought, brought by Spaniards when they conquered Costa Rica beans we grow the beans by indigenous in African cultures they started using both so Costa Rica is like a, a melting pot we have three different cultures that was the main um, um, the main uh, influence in our gastronomy, which is indigenous, Spaniards, and Afro, uh, Afro-American, uh, African, sorry. Um, those three main components, they blend into what we are right now. And we walked away from that. It was sad because you learned that our culture was based in different cultures. So thank you very much. I hope you love this. I hope you guys do this at home. This is a very simple, it looks, I had too many things in my kitchen. Um, cooking is like that, you know, you don't, you don't cook with only one pot, but uh, the chicken, as I said, you can reuse it the next day to make, um, uh, you know, you can make a casserole, you can make anything you want with this and eat it with rice or noodles or whatever. I mean, you don't have to make chalupas uh, the, next, the next day. Gallo Pinto. Of course, as I said before, you can eat it for uh, the three different meals, <clears throat> um, and that's it. I hope you had. You, I I I was fun to entertain, and <laughs> I hope I did a great job today. So <laughs> please come Bobby, to see that was us. Wonderful. We appreciate all the time and <laughs> effort you put into the demonstrations today. And I want to just say for Upstate International, we want to thank you for joining us today. And we hope you will join us again in the upcoming weeks for some exciting events. Please join the World Affairs Council of the Upstate on July 9th at 12 p.m. to hear Ambassador John Herbst discuss the state of the U.S. foreign affairs and the, impl and the implications of Bolton's recent book. Also, on July 15th at 12.30 p.m., retired General John Allen President of the Brookings Institution will speak on leadership. For more information or to register for an event, please visit our website at upstateinternational.org. Thank you, everybody, for attending this event. Thank Bye. you.